All right, we got 530. Here's another original pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Jenny David. Here. Roger Mayhew. Yep. Charles Olsey. Here. John Simmons. Here. Greg Scott. Here. Commissioners, any additions or corrections to the agenda? I'd like to make a couple of changes here. Commissioner under, Simmons? Under five. Yep. I'd like to change 5B from Parks and Recreation to Purchasing Procedures. And I'd like to remove J. We'd like to remove it to... You want to move it? To a later date, I guess. Goal setting and controller transition. We, I, we need to talk about the budget. I think that's our most... Agreed. Um, Priorities. Well, we, need, we, we need to discuss the budget. We don't have much time left. Do you guys have an issue with that? <laughs> Tonight's going to be pretty lengthy. No, it's another meeting for it. No, to a later committee of the whole. The next okay, one. I'm fine with it. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Moving that to a later later date. Any other additions or questions? No. Item three, public comment. Any public comment in the room on agenda items only? Any public comment on the phone? Appointments, 4A. Sheriff related to the Northern Michigan Mutual Aid Reciprocal Law Enforcement Agreement. Come on up, guys. Good evening. Um, this this agreement, if we sign it, um, it I, I really believe it would be beneficial for our county. It's a it's a Northern Michigan mutual aid for critical incidents. As you can see on the top portion of this, of all the agencies that are involved in this. Uh, what will benefit for us is that West Branch PD has already belonged to this, and they have one individual that, that is on the team. So if we was to join this team, our goal is to get one of our people involved, which will, which, which will be very beneficial for our county, because if we have a, a critical incident, we'll ha we have two people right here locally that can respond immediately. Uh, assess the situation and get the rest of the team coming so they can basically hold it down so we can formulate a plan these these folks will be you know educated and there's a lot of there's a lot of training involved um, and, and another thing um, if if we was to join this team and we sent one of our guys that guy is going to be trained and then then he can bring that training to the rest of our people so so whatever he's trained how to uh, enter rooms, how to uh, activate emergency uh, control, that will be brought to everybody within within our agency. So I think it's very it's very um, beneficial for us to join this team. And and we did we were part of this team prior to me taking over, but I I had backed off on it because I wasn't really up on it. But uh, after studying it and, and after looking at it and seeing how many people are actually involved in this, how many agencies, it's very beneficial. And they've got all kinds of equipment. They got a dive team. Uh, they got a. Uh, they've got a uh, vehicle. I mean, they've got they've got a lot of a lot of stuff that could help us out if we have a critical incident. So basically, what we need is is your approval, your your backing of this, and, and we could have the chair. Uh, sign it, and then we will be part of this agency. How much is it going to cost? Who's going to pay for it? It's eight hundred dollars. It's about eight hundred dollars annually right now. Really? And who's paying for it? We would have to pay for it out of our budget. What we'd have to do. Do you have the uh, manpower currently to do this? Do you have somebody in mind? Yeah, I, we do. We do. Oh, I'm in a question. Go ahead. I don't see where it's a team. There's nothing in here about a team or eight hundred dollars for that matter. Oh, um, this this is a the way I'm reading it, it's a reciprocal agreement for 
equipment and people, yes, but to respond to an emergency, but I don't see where it's a designated team. Now, I understand you say within this group, there's different types of teams, but you're you're talking about a specific team. You, you, well, you're not sending a diver. No. No, so the dive team thing is out. No, no. What that does, that puts us in this pool that we can pull all these resources, whatever we need, whatever Ogemar needs, this whole unit yeah. will work for us. Because right. We're part of that team. If, we need, if we need a diver, dive team, we call this agency, this this formulated group, they bring dive squads in here. They bring they bring okay. all their equipment. But you you're you're you you got something in mind because you're talking about designating a person to a to a particular team. And I'm just not reading it in the agreement where it's a we're donating to a team. We got <laughs> an emergency. And a commanding officer. I mean, this this reads to me as just a typical fire department mutual aid pact. Yeah, it's it's a little bit more detailed than that. These folks, if we were to join up with them again, would take care of all critical incidents. If it, whatever we needed in Ogemaw County, I call the commander, and then he's going to send he's going to send a squadron to come and help Ogemaw County. Whatever it takes. It's kind of how I read it. it. Was like an emergency. We respond. They respond. Yeah. So I, I, I guaranteed a gunman. You know, we're going to call these folks. We're going to call our people. But so is our individual. I mean, there's a lot of counties listed here. A lot. I, I count them, but there's a lot of counties listed here. Um. I mean, is this indiv Is this? Are, are they quite busy? Are they quite active? Is this going to take an individual that's going to be just designated to this, and it's going to be a, a full? I don't want to say full time, but definitely some designated hours. I don't know that, but you know, I can't give you numbers, but, but I don't Sorry. believe, I don't believe that that is a, no, I don't, I don't. So that. what's the city guy trained as? Like he's uh, emergency response. So he's like a, a SWAT member. Right. So like the state sure, police EC team or whatever it is. Right. Within this emergency contract in this group is a group of them that are trained as SWAT, if you were, or emergency response team. So by joining this, we have access to that emergency response team as a part of this coalition. If we get to a point where one of the deputies qualifies and then goes on to training to be a part of that particular aspect of this mutual aid agreement, then our deputy would also match the city officer. And we would have two within our county that would act, they would act as the primary or seen responsibility and coordinate the response from the rest of this group. <clears throat> Again, it's just because we sign up, all we're doing with signing up was a contract, in my opinion, is, is entering the group because there's a whole process. Our deputy could or could not actually make assignment to this team. Yeah. You wouldn't just automatically get yeah. membership. Right. We do have a deputy that we hired, in, or Deputy Chimura. He was dive certified at his previous employment. That does carry over. We could entertain if we could afford it offering him the opportunity of being a part of this. If it's he's an out. SRO now. He's an SOR right now, so how does that affect the SOR? None of that's been, this just opens the door for us to have opportunities, mm -hmm. but also to tap these resources. Yeah. So. Is state involved with this? State is not. This okay. is local jurisdiction. State has their own pocket of stuff that okay. they work with. So this is independent, this is Northern Michigan. This is the different counties and cities, okay. municipalities, putting in their resources for their own individual state. So when you call the state through operations, they have to activate their teams, whether it's dive, uh, aviation, um, ES, and then they come from their wherever they're stationed. So aviation from Lansing, ES team from your district headquarters, dive teams from wherever they're at. So you have response team times that are associated with that response. The one benefit I see to this, like having the city officer, if we have an incident, the city officer is going to be one of the first people on scene coordinating the response from this agency. So if we end up putting a deputy that has the same responsibility, now we have two scene commanders, basically, basically it's how they're trained, similar to what ES does. 
then they coordinate everybody coming in. This is what we got. This is what you need to bring from their resources. It's just another added. Plus, it's a shot for our employees to have different avenues to work towards if we can make it happen. Yeah, it's a timely thing. And just, and I'm going to trust you guys to do this is not to run us then because we're got staff sometimes more than a lot of these. I'm looking at a lot of small towns here yeah. that probably only have two officers. They're, they're not. They're not going to take one of their two officers out there, and you know, you know my background in the fire service. Correct. You know, staffing. You know, I I send. I had no problem sending two tankers of water to a ten miles away, but that chief knew that the first tanker was going to dump and go home. Right. Because yeah. he's not going to stay there. Yeah, you got to take care. You know, I got to I got to go home. Uh, I just, you know. Got to trust that, you know, they got something going, natural emergency or something like that, where they need officers, but we just can't be thin here. That's fair. So, I just like that. I think the key words are critical incident. And thank goodness the majority of these counties I'm reading don't have many critical incidents. But when they do, I think it's great that we're prepared to have a collaboration with people that have certain niches that they're really good at. So is that critical rating? critical incidences that aren't very often. So it's not going to hopefully it's something that we hardly ever have to do. But if we do, we're prepared. Just like I talk about the importance of our emergency manager, Mike, who's here tonight. You know, we hope that we hardly ever have to use that. But it's we're blessed to have the fact that we have that here in case we ever have to. Uh, agreed, but it is a valid concern, especially with, with training. And, and I think any extra education or resources is definitely uh, excellent. But but you, had a, you, you make a valid point as far as staffing. We definitely have to take care of our own, but I think this is an excellent idea, um, we're, especially we're, with where we are. Go ahead. Where in the budget is this coming from? This 800 bucks? I have not specifically identified a slide item. I got, I got training. You could probably take. There's it training out. money. I how much is in your training did, fund? So you know? How still... much is in the training fund? You know. Well, you just made a budget transfer from it. Yeah, it's it's in the thousands. I can have that identified before next Thursday, so that when you make it, that you know where that money's coming from. I mean, uh, it's just so that this this training doesn't cause overtime or anything. You guys gonna watch that? Well, I have no objection. You know, we don't want to send five of our deputies to be a part of this because then you know, there's right. the potential, but it also, it's a give and take. And Correct. The primary is, is a responsibility of Oldmore County. But it does give us additional resources that we can tap and availability for promotion for some internal type stuff. And, but it's a give and take and it needs to be managed just like day-to-day -day operations. Questions? Comments? I can have that. Yeah. Go ahead and put it on the Put it in the resolution. Put it resolution. Where that yeah, we're already listed in there. I mean, we're listed in this. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it? I asked about that today. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Michael Perfect. Bowles, Emergency thank Management you. Coordinator, Grant Purchase. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Now you're going to give us some money. <laughs> uh, I am. Good. I, I like to hear more, people I've come up and give us money. Yeah. I've got more money for you, and I'll be able to help Brian with his project if it's completely approved. So, right. um, Ryan with his Brian, uh, yes, uh, Ryan. the sheriff's department. I said Ryan, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, the sheriff's department. <laughs> um, if they are part of the special task team, then because I look at that, the sheriff's department will qualify for specialty policing equipment because they have they're part of a specialty team there you go he's and money through already the, brian for the through the lepta group um homeland security money will be able to be available perfect never a guarantee but yeah. brian i will be try. able to work to make it happen so um i'm here tonight uh because i want to purchase uh um hazardous materials response equipment for the fire association through the Homeland Security Program. Um, this grant specifically is the Hazardous Materials Response Preparedness Grant. 
Um, it's a $1,500 grant that uh, we pay our contribution in kind through our LEPC, LPT meetings. The attendance of those meetings gives us our contribution in kind. It's approximately $350 a year. Um, and we get $30 an hour for everybody who comes to this meeting. Uh, and we have four meetings a year, so it's very easily covered. Um, we also pay for our uh, um, our uh, uh, oh gosh, it's uh, just a second I put it in here. I was looking at this the other day. Yeah, do I not see it now? Our um, I can't find it either. Our online program for the hazardous materials that are in businesses in the county, that online program that we have is $150, and that allows all of our first responders, emergency management, and dispatch to look at any facility that has hazardous materials and know what hazardous materials they are and where they're located on the premises uh, as they're responding. It's a, it's a safety issue for our first responders. So um, this material that we're, we're purchasing is um, uh, a spill kit. Okay. Yeah, spill Love kit it. for, for uh, uh, lakes and rivers, also for dry land. This will give our first responders the ability to build dams or whatever, uh, make that initial attack to protect our environment while we're waiting for professional environmental people to get here, which can be hours to days, literally. I've had a situation in Aranac County where it was actually almost two weeks because it was the, the Flint River was full of pollutants at that time, and that's where all the environmental companies were. I couldn't get one up here. So uh, locally in Aranac County, we protected the environment locally for two weeks. Uh, before we could get it cleaned up. Is this $1,121.17? Yes, ma'am. So you, this is a, a grant for this equipment, correct? Correct, correct. Okay. This will be zero Ogemaw County taxpayers' dollars. Perfect. Uh, we just have to put the money up front, and, uh, and then we get reimbursed. This grant, we get reimbursed in January or February of next year. I have to have the purchase completed by the end of September, and uh, that's the state's fiscal year. And then and then they reimburse in January or February. And this is going to the Rose City Fire Department? Uh, the Fire Association will determine where they want to keep it. But uh, the uh, granules portion, uh, each fire department will get approximately 10 bags of granules to protect. And then the large barrel in the equipment will be, we have one in Rose City right now, so I think they want to move the, the next one possibly down to Mills or in the West Branch area. Okay, perfect. So you just need this on for a resolution? Yes, ma'am. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else you want no, to No, unless you have something else for me. I don't think so. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you all very much. You have a great Mike. job. Thank you, Mike. You have a great day. We, uh, as well. we did finally... Uh, Final approval on our alignment form to uh, build the uh, community emergency response team uh, response trailer. So we'll start the process to uh, to uh, create the purchases for that. And I'll be seeing you, I think, in about six weeks for that one. Unless that's a I can add on to that's that. A I've, I've been helping Mike with that. That trailer is going to be state of the art. And if we would have an emergency, it's it really will be. Pretty awesome. Yeah. It, Hopefully we only have to use it for training. But it's a it's a volunteer incident command trailer, but in a pinch it could be used for police, fire, EMS, everything. Yeah. Yes. Good. So thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. Have a great night. Thanks. Discussion Thanks. items. A letter of support for empowering Northeast Michigan communities, a comprehensive housing study. Tim? This is um letter of support for a, a regional housing study. It's uh, born out of a group that Commissioner Wilsey is a part of uh, that's encompassing a number of counties in our part of the state, Northeast Michigan. I don't remember how many. There were there quite a eight, few. Eight counties. Yeah. And uh, one of the one of the, the products of this grant or, or this program, should it uh, come to fruition, is 
you know, the base, the foundation data that, that we need throughout the region. If we're going to pursue housing grants, um, you know, what particular income uh, group are we looking at? And there's a big push at the state right now to particularly get to the middle income group. And um, they've got the, the lower income groups you know, fairly well covered with uh, various grants that um, our housing program is involved in already. Uh, both housing improvement programs and some emergency uh, repair programs like for furnaces. But there's a, a group that's sort of caught in the middle that uh, really is lacking the housing stock in our region right now. So this particular program is hoping to get that foundation data put together so we can target what we need. Uh, and if, with all these counties involved, I think there's a better chance of us bringing something back anyway to the region. And you know, the Commissioner, if you have any more you have to add to that. Yeah, I mean, you guys have heard me speak about this a few times. About three months ago, I went to Alpena, and then uh, our two big areas that we um, pretty much pinpointed that we have an extreme shortage, especially here in Ogma County, is housing stock and rental housing. And then um, with that being said, in 2018, the city of West Branch did a housing study. The study went outside of West Branch a little bit, but Basically, it came back and said that the biggest gap that we have is we have no houses for median income families. Yep. And I think that still stands true. Yep. But this is just a, a big collaboration, and actually it's 11 counties. And we just have a great opportunity right now with myself being involved with this. Tomorrow, I'm going to be back in Opina. I'm on the steering committee for this. And then Penny Paya with the EDC is also really involved with this. So it's just a really good deal that we just kind of keep you know, pressure on and, and just ride with them and see where this can go for us. Now, using the artful terms that our attorneys taught us at the open meetings training, uh, obviously you're not going to take a vote on this tonight, but there is a deadline, I understand, of tomorrow where they need to have these letters of support in. So uh, unless there was anybody who objected to it, um, you know, we could ask the chair to sign that letter now, and then we can get the, the actual document to the uh Forget the gentleman's name. Alini, uh, yeah, Lenny Avery from Alpina. It is. Target Alpina is the fiduciary, um, and he's the one that's asking for this. And it's no cost to us. And we're we're asking we're asking this to the to agriculture and rural development to be the one who would be paying for this study. It's just a just a letter of support from us saying that you know we feel the importance of our housing situation here in the county, and if you'd like to be part of the study. It's not going to cost us anything. I think we should because it is definitely a, a problem in Oklahoma County. Yes, yeah, for the uh, rising. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And when they were talking about changing that from um, housing out there on M30 by the brook and want to make it industrial so they can have more industry coming in here, that's great, but they don't have any place to live. Right. So it needs to be done. We because we don't have the housing here for people. They have to live someplace else to work here. We don't have the housing, we don't have the rental housing. No, we do not. It's part of the rising tide. Yeah. Are they going to be able to utilize, if, if we do the letter of support and we, we join into uh, this, are they going to be able to utilize any of that information that was gathered? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's been shared quite a bit lately between what I'm working on with the EDC and, yeah, that's actually just... A bunch of us yesterday were talking about it. So yes, that would definitely be still very beneficial. I think we should definitely go forward with this letter of support. Any any concerns, commissioners, questions? I agree with that. Are you okay, Commissioner Scott? I'm good with it. Okay. Item five B purchasing procedures. Commissioner Simmons. So um yeah, that's that's me. I'm looking at our purchasing procedures and um you know we are all about transparency, at least we try to be. And uh, I was looking through our purchasing procedures and it's um, um, telling the administrator shall decide the uh, method to employ obtaining the most favorable price after considering the nature of the importance of the completed work. And it says uh, also that the uh, county administrator with one witness will open the uh, bids and um, to me, that's not very transparent. And in the past, which was very transparent, when a bid came in, if a ticket committee wanted it or if the Board of Commissioners put out a bid, uh, it, it was opened at the commissioner's meeting. Um, 
not not by one person with uh, uh, with one witness. And it was always time stamped at the clerk's office too. So you always knew when it was coming in. When it came in, it was time stamped on the on the on the machine in the clerk's office. So I would I would really like to change that pr procedure just so we can have um, transparency versus one person doing it, and then there's no question about the um, the bids and how many pieces of bids or all the bids or whatever. So just I think we should look at that. Uh, I think it's important and uh, that we be transparent in how this is done. But just by one person opening them with one witness, that's not very transparent to me. So, I mean, that, I was looking at here and, and sometimes um, it can be an issue. Yeah. I know for the little experience I have. Commissioner, what's he got? The Commissioner Scott. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, Myself no. and Commissioner Scott, you know, we sit in with the Road Commission and Bridges and all of their bids are at their meetings. They have meetings every other Wednesday and they open them up, basically the chairman at and then they have, uh, you know, this main secretary, she has her brown envelope, opens everything up, hands it to Pat, and then it's read out loud. That's how they do it. So are, you that's agree pretty... are you agreeing with Commissioner Simmons? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. I think there should be. Commissioner Scott? Well, um, then we're taking it out of the, the, and then a, a committee. If a committee bids something out, um, We're skipping the the committee doesn't open it. The board board of commissioners open it. No, the committee opens it. For instance, the uh, what just happened recently. For instance, uh, Parks and Rec put out a bill for a water hookup. Then those bids should have been opened by Parks and Rec board out in the open at a public meeting, and not by one person with one witness. That's that's my contention. Is all uh, we want to be real transparent, or and uh, avoid some arguments from the public or anybody else. Um, I just think it should be as transparent as it used to be, and we never had a problem with bid. Everybody knew in the audience. Everybody knew what that was when we sat down openly. But so, the, the Parks and Rec Committee would have, would open their bids, just like. Uh, uh, and any other committee would open their bids if they put something out for bid. So if it goes to the, could you solve understanding? So if it goes to the committee, say like you just said, the water bid, you guys open it, Parks and Rec, you open all the bids, and then what do you, what do you, what are the commissioners doing on on our end? We're, well, we we look, you guys make a decision. We we look at the bids. I mean, I discuss them at that time. There's a process of doing that. And then we, the partial rec board, as a board, um, through the um, chairman of that board, after the board meets and agrees upon it, the board would agree, and then it would go. The chairman of the partial rec committee would take it to the board of commissioners. The for final approval. decision for approval. For approval to spend our own money, yes. Yeah. Commissioner Scott, go ahead. There would be a recommendation from the committee. Right. And if there's not a committee, then all the bids come to the commissioners and are open at a commissioner meeting. Yes, if it's like a um, if it's like a, an insurance bid, for instance, you know, there's an insurance committee. But yeah. say snow removal. Let's say something simple. Let's just say that usually it is put out. Uh, we agree to put the bid out. This board does for let's say insurance. Then it should be opened in, with the board of commissioners. Okay, but there is an insurance committee. I understand a committee of two. Okay. Two but, commissioners. Yeah, two commissioners. But the commissioners are in agreement that they want to put this out for bid, so it should come back to the commissioners okay. to open it. Just like the Parks and Rec. The Parks and Rec Committee wanted, wanted the bid to go out, so it should come back to Parks and Rec before it goes to the commissioners for recommendation. Commissioner Mayo. What's your thoughts? Fine with me. Yes? Yep. Any other thoughts, Commissioner Wiltsey? 
No, I, I, no, I like transparency. I think it's good that we open these these contracts up and and you know, all of us. All right, cool. It's the same for the transit then. Instead of the transit committee opening them up, come to the commissions. Yeah, that's fine. Well, who puts who puts it out for bid? We have an open meetings act. Transit anybody can come and look. Right, any yes. committee meeting is a so, public. Meeting. So I disagree. I think I don't think that's what Commissioner Simmons. She has utilized Parks and Rec as doing making their own decisions. The transit has two commissioners, but they have other individuals. They have a full board. So I think if they put something out to bid, they they come up with the decision and bring it back to us. I, I mean, I. Uh, that's how I just understood that. Okay. That's correct. That you understood you correctly. So it depends on how many people are on the committee. That that's my question. How do you want this on the committee? Well, yeah. you want you've got a committee that's got two people on it, but you want the commissioners. Well, I just to I, I you've got two committees. You got five people on it, and you want the committees to open it. Well, I think so. The common denominator is the number of people on the committee. No, no, no. no. It's, the committee not. two is only two when commissioners. I, when I talk transit, I I don't consider that a committee. Really, I consider that board. the transit board. I consider that a board for the transit because we're the ones that are on site. We're the ones that are looking at the stuff. We're the ones that know what's going on there. I consider that a transit board, not a transit committee. Of two people committee. But when you have a regular board out there like we have at transit, I consider that a board. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I just like parks and rec, I consider that a board. We open it as a board and then we make the recommendation to the commissioners, uh, yes. Fine with that. Thank you. Well I'm just processing it. Um when you've got a bid that goes out, snow removal is a great example. There's no committee out there that's in charge of that, but we could easily bring those here at a community the whole open enough. They've been super easy of late. We're only getting one bit on things, so right. it's not you know that complex. But if you had four or five, you're just opening them at that point. You're not trying to evaluate or make decisions, uh, and then you don't necessarily lose any time because even now, for instance, with tonight with the snow removal, it still has to go to the regular meeting next week anyway. You so you don't miss anything by doing it and. As Commissioner Simmons is saying, there are more eyes on it as it comes through. I think Parks Committee is a really good example. I mean, they know what they want for that well. I, I don't know a well from, no, well, I do know a well from a septic, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, my, I hope so. Point. Um, so, you yeah, know, maybe they, that expertise, you know, immediately can see something that uh, well, they want to draw attention to, whatever. But just the idea you've got the additional eyes on it. And again, I don't think we lose any time doing that no i agree but then also talking about it and, and maybe other individuals watching the our videos hopefully will maybe it'll get us more bits in the future who knows with that i i agree with that i i agree with what you're stating it's just going to be very clearly stated i can uh, bring a draft at the next committee the whole and we can yeah we'll make there. it simple and... all right okay. anything else commissioner simmons no, I just want to, I just want it open publicly. I don't want it open behind closed doors with one witness. Okay, so sir. Uh item C, building temperature issue. I think we all read that letter. I did. <laughs> huh? I did. So did I. Yeah. <laughs> it was directing to the point. So what's what's your what's your uh what resolution for this? Uh, I, I know this may not be popular, but the easiest thing to do would be to move your meetings to 530. Uh, and then there's no interference with any any court activity or anything upstairs. I've had some conversations about this about, you know, my again, like the wells, my my understanding of HVAC is, is somewhat limited. But you know, my first thought was, well, you know, cooler weather's coming, so it's not going to be an issue, you know, maybe after next month. But then I learned that this is how we heat the building too. So you're still going to have the background noise. Yeah. So, and, and if you shut it off in the winter, now they're going to freeze upstairs. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be exactly the opposite of what they're experiencing now. So that that would be the, the, the simplest solution, but I don't know that that's popular with you as the commission. Commissioner? I have a comment. I, I did some talking to different offices uh, here in the building at, at the lower level. And um, so the air conditioner's on, it's blowing. And the people down here have electric heaters going and wearing sweaters because they're so cold. 
So do we complain like we're freezing down here? So you need to shut your <laughs> air conditioning off upstairs because you're hot and we're freezing down here. Yeah, I'm really hoping when we get through this consumer's energy review that there'll be some solutions for that, um, you know, zoning, whatever it might be. But I've got to believe there's a way that we can, you know, you know, let upstairs control their temperature to where they want it and not affect anybody downstairs and vice versa. But, well, and, and that's and that's fine. But it's 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 the fans that are creating the problem. The fans had to be put someplace else. It can't be. And it's not just that the commissioners are, are certain commissioners struggle with hearing. It's also people in the crowd in the back have, have uh, complained as well. I, my family has listened and, and they complain as well. They can uh, have trouble hearing when the fans are. So it's not just up, us up here that, that struggle with hearing. We've had the other individuals complain. And, and, then, then, and then in the wintertime, a nice and cozy warm up there, right? Um, and, and, they're, and they're cooking down, my understanding is they're cooking down here. So they have to just about strip their clothes off so they don't cook to death. <laughs> so What's your solution versus versus well, adding to the problem. What is your wanted, solution? Uh, the administrator's solution is, is a good solution. Uh, another another solution would be it'd be much more complicated. Is it by far the easiest? Is to have the commissioners meet in another location, Such like at a annex. church, the annex, or the annex, instead of here. If you want to have it in the morning. So, I mean, that's the more complicated of the two. Uh, everybody had to grab their stuff up, and run over the annex building instead of bringing, but um, that is a solution. We have to we have to attempt to accommodate. I mean, obviously, there's a concern. That's our job. Yeah. Um, versus adding to the problem. Again, hopefully, this can be resolved, but obviously, it ain't going to be anything real quick. Right. So, so maybe we should have the meetings at the annex building. I don't have a problem with that. Until I also, this thing's resolved. I also don't have a problem with 530, but... The, I don't have a problem with that either. So, Commissioner Wilty? Um, so, when the three of us new commissioners came on, wasn't the, the, the number one reason we were shutting off is because a few of us had hearing issues. Wasn't there headsets that were supposed to be... Um, they didn't work too well for me. They weren't working. But it, it wasn't just them. I'm sorry, but it wasn't just them. That's what I said. There was also well, people you, well, now I'm here. I think we could talk about it or maybe get closer to our mics too for that problem. But I was just wondering if the headsets that, that did they didn't work. Well, remember, they didn't the work headsets very well, are going to no. amplify that too. So you're going to get not only you, you, you'll hear, but you're going to hear that a lot louder as well. Yeah, you will. And you have what, to really, the people that are disabled or. Oh no! I'm, what really hurts with with that's with what hearing aids is all that background noise. Because then all of a sudden you got all this stuff coming in. <laughs> Let me see. If I can. You like that, huh? Commissioner <laughs> Scott, what's your solution? Well, I think that the reason why we have two different times is transparency. Um, it allows people that cannot attend a evening meeting to be able to attend a day meeting, uh, and vice versa. And then the other thing is, it's it's our employees. I mean. Um, yep. We're, we're going to ask all our employees to make reports to us at 5.30 in the evening um, if they are on our, if they're on our clock, we could even be talking about overtime in, in yep. some cases. Um, but I don't think it's fair to our department heads and our elected officials that work every day in a, at an eight to five day to have to come to a 5.30 meeting for every one, every meeting. Uh, I think it, yep. it's I think it's evenly divided now. Uh, so in that respect, I, I'm not opposed to the annex building. I think uh, mm -hmm. that wouldn't be a that that wouldn't that wouldn't hinder us. Um, okay, we can zoom there also, right? Okay. The annex now I thought is security. Okay. There is none. Right. There's no we'll problem. invite the sheriff every meeting. No body scanner. <laughs> him and uh, him and Paul will be ours. Tommy Gunn. That's a valid point. I mean, no, we also have all audience members that comes, and there's been some heated ones. And I'm sure that we'll be moving forward as well. It's, it's a valid point. No, but all day long, and they don't have any security over there either, and they're working every day. Over where? Can you conceal the annex? Really? The annex? If you have a concealed question. 
Right now, no. Right? Yeah, I believe you can. I understand. There's no body scanner. I can still carry. I can carry. I'm going to be carrying. <laughs> and I'll stand behind you. <laughs> Me too. Next to you. We'll have fun. Yeah. yeah. No, I just. So it was a valid like point. Concerned. Absolutely. So, would you guys like to move move it over to the annex building, the early meetings? Yeah. We so can try that. we can hear. Absolutely. Thank you. So moving forward, just for the early meetings, correct? Yes. Okay. That's the last. Oh, the first two meetings of the month. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yes. so what are we going to do? Have a concern, Karen? No, I just want to write that down. Is that effective immediately? Your next morning meeting will be at the annex. Yeah, I would. Yes. Well, so, Commissioner Scott. I mean, if, Nick, we next week? Our, if we moved our evening meetings over there too, we wouldn't, then the security could leave at five o'clock. We wouldn't have to pay them to be here until we leave. Yeah, we'd have the sheriff's department sitting out there with Tommy guns. That's good. No, I'm just messing with you. It is a thought. Well, I mean, we could ask the sheriff for a deputy to. To, to set in the room. You pay overtime? So what's the difference? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to pay overtime. What's the difference between no. that? Well, I don't, I don't see a security. I'm, I'm not no. concerned about the security risk uh, over there, but if, <laughs> why not just put all the meetings over there? The room is conducive to the meetings. Well, they, well Go ahead. I mean, there's enough room for public. To, there's probably even more seating over there than there is here. Um, and then there's a big round table for committee at the whole meetings. So are we opening ourselves up for any liability issues with the security deal if there would be a problem? I mean, I mean I'll just say that more municipalities than not have meetings that are not in secure buildings. Um, we just happened to be in this building where the security was added, probably as a result, and this is before my time, but probably as a result of that administrative court order that talked about security for court buildings. We're just, frankly, a beneficiary of that by being physically in this location. But I don't know that any of our townships have security. Uh, doubt that the city of West Branch has security. No, no, um, no, you know, our, our meetings when I was at Ingham, there was no security. Uh, for where the board was meeting, there was another building where there was, and it was you know pretty intense. Um, but again, that was occupied by courts, and that's why they had the security there. So it, it's uh, you know to me, I, I wouldn't consider it a requirement. And if we did have a, an agenda that looked like it was going to draw some spirited conversation, we can notify the sheriff ahead of time and just ask that he or a representative from his department be present. Just that presence alone tends to you know, calm people. Uh, they don't don't tend to you know get out of control. Um, not to say that it won't happen, but uh, I just don't think the incidence of it, it particularly with this board, yes, it's not that common that you get anything on the agenda. Maybe the occasional zoning matter that might draw a crowd, but I doubt that you're going to have a situation very often where there's concern. I think it's worth a trial, but if if any of us become uncomfortable at all, if there's any incidents, then then we're back here with security. Because there has been in the past a few incidents that have made me um, uneasy, and, and that will not be tolerated. I'll protect Jenny. Craig will protect you. <laughs> He's bigger than all of us. Uh, it will be, yeah, it will be tolerated, and we're back here. Okay. Um, the, the thing with Charlie, we had security here before. I mean, it was just upstairs. The metal detector was upstairs, and when there was other matters in the public and that's when we start talking about well why are we just protecting upstairs why not bring it downstairs and put it by the put it by the door mm -hmm. and then it just it went a few more steps than we're to the point where we are now um but yeah courts have always been secured with with a bailiff and a in a metal detector it's probably been there Karen how long has it been there but but there's also been a lot. The world has, has changed significantly. Yes, it has. So there's multiple reasons, and our job is to keep everybody safe. Yeah, but so, you know, they, the sheriff does have a night patrol. We could just borrow the guy for an hour or two, right? That was my thoughts exactly. They got to call for service. Yeah. Well, and it's more still the daylight, and the other guy can take care of it. 
hey, we went how many years without it? I think again, it's it's worth a trial. But if but if anything happens, any any incidents at all, we're back. We're back here. Pretty simple. So next, do you when do you guys want to start this? Do we start this next week? You think next week's a night meeting still? uh, But it would be the following week. uh, First, we're just going to do daytime daytime meetings at the annex building. My understanding. Okay, that was just discussed. Do we want all meetings at the annex building, or do we want just daytime? Well, the problem. Hang on, Commissioner Simmons. That way, maybe the the confusion is minimized. And it's just across the table. Go ahead. We would not be the only one using that room because they do schedule it for other meetings over there, too. Yeah, Yeah, they do. They have quite a few meetings or classes. So I guess before we move over there, we probably should ask them if we can use the meeting. We could go to a church. Wait a We'd be yeah. safe there. We're just free together. Stop it. <laughs> Kelly, did you have something? I was trying to pull up the calendar here. I can look over there, but I have, I mean, I'm the one who usually schedules all the <laughs> events and everything that go on. So is it pretty open? I don't know. I can't see. I can go to my can you go check and come yeah. and check back with us so we know what we're where we're, we're gonna be next week. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Commissioner Smith. <laughs> Or Commissioner Scott, I'm looking at you. Uh, okay. Well, you know, I don't know about this calling over there and asking them. I, we own the house. I mean, it's our place. But somebody's already got it scheduled. Okay. And then we still are able to you're scheduled. It? You're scheduled into September and in October we take it over. Okay. It's my house. We take it over. You know, all I'm saying is, yes, that way the public knows that every meeting is over there. Daytime, nighttime, whatever. We're going to try simplify. Instead of jumping back and forth, and you know, you know what's going to happen. People are going to come up to this door, and it's not going to. There's nobody here. We're they're over there, and back and forth. Your panel too. We're getting. Uh, oh no, no, we just switched the other end of the room. You know, instead of being at the big, be at the big table for the cow meetings, and go to the other end of the room and put our name plates on the table. like like we do for planning commission. Planning Commission sets down the other end of the room and and their backs are to the wall. Are there enough microphones there? Well, I think we can. Wise? I think we can get them. We need to make sure we, we have to accommodate everybody. So before we'll borrow we, one from the church. Before we make any decisions, to... let's see what their let's see what Kelly has to say. We'll come back to that. Item uh D district court procurement card request. Are we bringing this to you uh because the um, policy itself doesn't directly address the request. Um, the district court currently does not have a procurement card and they've asked for one, but um, our policy says that we will only issue procurement cards uh, in the name of our employees. And currently uh, the court administrator is not an employee of Ogama County, is an employee of the 86th district court. Get the number right, mm-hmm. 82nd district court, okay. Uh, but it's a two county court and the current uh, court administrator is uh, headquartered in Rock Common County and not here. Uh, so long as the, the purchases on that card were solely Ogemaw County purchases, um, it, it, it would be you know, fine. I mean, we just would have to make sure that that was the case. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it is, you know, the court that services the county. So what we're asking the board uh, is for the the authority to do that if you're in agreement. The authority to do what exactly? To issue a procurement card to an individual who is not a direct employee of the county, but is an employee of the court. I don't have a problem. I have a question. Go ahead, can I Does this employee come to you with this? No, they actually go to the treasurer and there's a, a process. There's no, no, no. Why is this even brought up? They come to you and they, they wanted this. Is that why we're right? They, the, the judge has asked. Oh, okay. And well, I think if it's going to help them efficiently and be more productive, and obviously someone that's been in their job for a while, right? I mean, I don't see a problem with it. I got to see a problem with it. Go ahead. I don't think we have total, con- total control. It's coming. Other people from other counties are used. Another county is using it. How do we know what to purchase? Could, could be purchased stuff at Ross Common County. But it still has to go through all the channels. It's, she's. It's still under the direct control of Judge B. 
then we're saying that if Judge Beebe wants to hold the card, we're not going to give it to her because she doesn't live in Ogemaw County. Say that one more time, please. I'm sorry, so I missed that. Judge Beebe asked for this card and wanted to hold on to this card. We wouldn't give it to her because she doesn't live in our county. Is that what you mean? Who, me? Yeah. I didn't say anything about living in the county. Yeah. I'm just saying we lose control of it because it's for two counties. Well, then I, I guess judge if Judge Beebe wanted to hold this card in her hand and she's the judge for two counties, then because it's two counties, you're not going to let this district court judge hold this card. Then I have another question. Go ahead. Is she going to have a, a card for Roscommon County also? We don't know what their procedures are. No, but you understand what I'm saying. Somebody in the audience that could okay. shed some light on that. Did you have, you want to come on up? Um, come on up. <laughs> sure. Do you want to I, I'm not familiar with who you are. Um, my name is Terry Claney. And Hi. I'm the circuit court administrator and the administrative assistant to the chief judge. Okay. Um, and I can vouch for Judge Beebe. I don't, that we do have um, the same setup in Roscommon County that they have a card that they use there. So I think what they're asking for is to have a card to be able to use over here for their purchases. That's all. That's for over here, here. Yes. not to share between the two. Oh gosh, no. Okay. No. I don't have a problem with that. Separation. But what I was saying is there's only one card, two counties. So I'd have a problem. No, 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 no. That's fair. No, it would be a uh, use for 82nd District Court Ogemaw County card. Okay. 82nd District okay. Court Roscommon County card. Two Thank separate. You. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. you're you're the one that's over here now. I do both. You do ask. Rest I always have done both. Oh, okay. For circuit For court, but I'm circuit court. Oh, okay. she's district court, right? Okay. She's the one that wrote you the letter about the temperature. Oh, okay. Are you the temperature lady? <laughs> I wrote it on behalf of the chief judge. Yes, I. I... <laughs> and I like the chief judge. I don't want to blame him. Plan stop. But you stop. Thank you. Yeah, it's not cold down here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't see a problem with this. Do you guys? I don't see a problem. I don't see a problem either. We'll put this on for a resolution. Thank you. Next, we have snow removal and seasonal maintenance bid. Okay, this uh, was bid and again, direct mail to a number of known uh, snow removal operations in the county, but unfortunately only received one reply. Uh, in the time, but I am happy to report the pricing that finished concrete is offered is exactly what it was for 23. So um, that that was a, a bit of a relief um, to know. They, I, I, I'll just say, uh, just from my own observations, do do an outstanding job for us. Um, they they generally are here. Um, even before it reaches the minimum uh, removal depths. And generally things are cleared even before we get to work in the morning. So, uh, but the other thing I would mention too, is they're very good about repairing any damage that occurs. So if they hit a curb and the curb is, is dinged up, they are very good about getting back here when weather permits and fixing that problem. I know that was an issue several years ago with a prior uh, contractor. So um, uh, very good. And, and I certainly would recommend your approval. Questions, comments? He's a good contractor. It's easy for him to remember when he repairs those curbs because he's in the cement business. Yeah, they're uh, very professional. And he does a good job at that, too. <laughs> it just blows my mind that only one thing I, I made announcements at my fellowships in the city that we were bidding it. So I tried to get the word out that the bids were out there. And I know a couple of contractors, too. and. You know, I, I brought this up in my first term, I think, because they hadn't bid it out for years. And then I had contractors bugging me, why does this guy get the bid every year? Well, we opened it up and he was, once again, he was the only bidder. And it's been that way. I think when, when finished, did finally get in the picture, they did bid against our previous contractor. And that was the only time I've seen a competitive bid. And since then, the other contractor hasn't bid it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, but it's the same thing. You guys went through with transit for building and the same thing that happened yeah. at the parks when we bid out that and get one contractor. And I don't know why. We're seeing it everywhere. Questions? Go ahead, Commissioner. So what's nice about him, he has several employees too. So it's in, in one of them sick, the other one picks it up and runs with it. You know what I'm saying? 
So, Mr. Mayhew. Good with this bid. Okay. Uh, item F, fiscal year 2023, third quarter budget adjustments. You can walk through some of the highlights on this. I'm going to work off the draft resolution, but we do have the detail here if we need to see any specific line items. The first group of numbers that you're seeing are adjustments primarily to revenue, showing where um, you know, revenue has increased for the various funds and starting right with the general fund. Right now, we're projecting an additional 100000 in uh, revenues coming into the county. And these are generally... Um, um, you know, adjustments to things like grants and so on. Um, I did speak with the uh, equalization director and he said the buildings that went out for property taxes projected will bring in um, a, couple, you know, a little over 200,000 more than what we budgeted. But what, what I don't know is whether or not he had factored in captures for that. So that fourth quarter, you'll see an adjustment there too anyway, the way it sounds, uh, but you know, time will tell. Uh, going down to the the funds themselves, uh, the big jump in the road patrol millage, 22,000, that was a uh, revenue that we've already taken in from the millage itself. And that we talked about that when we did the amendment for that legal fee, uh, that that was uh, actually a factor. Um, the American Rescue Plan isn't really new revenue. Um, the way we, through instructions of our audit, uh, the way we account for this is the funds are sitting there in the fund balance. And as we spend down on projects, then the funds are moved into the revenue side uh, of the spreadsheet. So that's that's why. So that's not new money, but it is um, a movement. Tim, I have a question. Mm -hmm. This is real important stuff. When you're going down a light item, can you say that on numbers, yeah. but it's just easier for us sure. to find it? So in that case, I was... Um, yeah, I found that one. Okay, that was 280. Yep, thank you. Um, next two, I just want to touch on are 293 and 295. Those are our veterans office and the soldier relief fund. Uh, and again, in, in both cases, the revenue from their millages was higher than what we projected. Uh, on the um, um, veterans office fund, though, you're going to see some additional expenses we'll talk about in a second that are associated with the move to the office that they're in now. They Obviously, we have to pay rent now. We didn't have that before. So there's been a change in that. The uh, tax reversion fund, tax umbrella fund, the tax receivable funds, those are fluid anyway. As the year progresses, you see uh, changes in this. And this is, you know, it's almost impossible to project what that's going to be. We do our best, but uh, at least it's all on the positive side. Uh, the housing program fund, there was an additional grant that um, uh, was received by the housing program. And that's the, the primary reason. We've also had a few... Uh, uh, projects that were paid off. So as people receive funding for home improvements, they make payments back to the program. So it's like a revolving fund. And when they have um, you know make that in, obviously that's additional revenue to the program itself. So that's a, a big portion of it. In the transit fund, uh, again, this is just uh, the monies that have come in from uh, some of the, it's like a 5933 grant that we received. Well, I forget the number exactly, but some of that MDOT money coming in. Ray has mentioned this too, that uh, for whatever reason, there's been an increase in some of that funding. And so that's what you're seeing with uh, that increase. So the next uh, group of four are just, again, that same group now stated in a different way for the general fund and where, where those revenues, additional revenues have come from. And the first one is the intergovernmental revenue. So those are monies that may be coming from the state or the federal government that were higher than what were projected. You'll see those in there. Uh, one of them is the Homeland Security. Um, there is a large amount that came in. Remember what Mike said earlier about uh, the, the project that was approved tonight. He has to have that spent by the end of September but we don't see the revenue until February. Well, we're crossing into a fiscal year. So what we're seeing right now is additional money coming in on the Homeland Security, but it's paying for things that we approved in the last fiscal year. So it's just a- So how's that handled wise, budget wise, if it comes in a different FY mm -hmm. and it's beyond the, the closing date of, yeah. of the um, books? The, the auditors will book receivables uh, in our audits. So we kind of know it's coming that way. Um, it it kind of wreaks havoc on what we see here, but as far as you know, the, the being able to trace it, and this is why we keep it in its own fund, you know, trace it back to what we've committed to and what's coming in to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. 
Another example is the siren, or not the siren, the emergency notification grant, where we're participating with four other counties. We were the fiduciary. So those four other counties are reimbursing us. So that's kept separate as well. If we cross a fiscal year, yeah, that's why we have the auditors. They book that as a receivable in our audit so that it makes sure that we get it booked where it belongs so that we can show the state we're all balanced. So it will be booked as far as the, the previous FY. If, if that's what it's from. Payment of an expenditure. Right, exactly. The one that we were just talking about tonight will be noted. You know, we spent it in 23, but we won't receive the funding for 24. 24. And then the department generated revenue is up uh, right now, and that that could be anything from deeds being receded in to map sales, uh, which for some reason are you know, pretty lucrative uh, for the county. Now the next group, and I'm sorry, Commissioner Welsey, I didn't put the department numbers on there, so I can amend that for the next time we do this. Uh, but these are the proposed changes now by the department in the general fund. The very first change that you see is animal control, for instance. Uh, they are, the, the, the budget there is increasing by just over $2,000. The primary reason for that one is the new contract we have for housing animals, uh, which we hadn't paid before. We hadn't adjusted the budget uh, since we had the contract uh, signed with Ray. Uh, it's you know obviously a legitimate expense. Uh, airport, board, and building security, those uh, expenditures are being reduced just based on where we are in the year and the various trends. Building and grounds increasing by $20,000. The primary reason for that one is we had a rate increase uh, for our utilities in this building. Uh, in fact, I guess all municipalities have a different rate now, but we got sucked pretty hard in this building. I think there's also some energy efficiency issues in play, but that's the big factor that seems to have shot that one up. But oddly enough, the jail, the annex, uh, and uh, I think there's a third one where we're paying utilities. We're not seeing that same jump you know, just in terms of what the expenses are. Uh, so that's why I suspect there's a little bit more than just the rate increase that's playing into it. I have a question on that. Mm -hmm. So you're saying consumers energy across the board has increased uh, for municipality. Yeah, and, and that uh, Jim Minthorn, who was here, was explaining it to me. There was some decision along the way that uh, we were being treated like a regular business. We're being uh, billed that way. And there was a reason they had to change that. And so that's was the explanation he gave me anyway. The big increases. Well, <laughs> substantial. Well, I mean, percentage-wise. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, 5%? Yeah, it's about 10%. Well, ten. The change you're making here is about five percent, isn't it? Uh, to the, that's the overall budget. Uh, the, this is oh, I mean, it's, utilities is there's one so part. much involved in that number. That's why I am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nothing done. I'm gonna start skipping over the little ones. Next one I want to talk about is corrections, where that increase uh, is in play. It's not uh, in personnel so much as it is. Uh, in the food area, uh, not only the food itself, but then the tools needed in the kitchen to prepare the food. I asked the sheriff and under sheriff about that, and they um, just a uh, bit of information for you. They produced or they made uh, over 6,000 additional meals this year. So we also know that uh, food saw quite the spike with inflation uh, in the early part of this budget year. So that certainly played into it as well. But 6,000 additional meals is going to cost more. Uh, overall, you'll see, though, that there was some offsetting revenue that came in uh, to corrections as well. And so overall, um, though, a 12000 increase. The decrease of $19,000 in county general uh, can be traced to our phone and postage bills. Uh, this is the first year that we put all of those under a single line so that we didn't have to go through each month and and divide the bill up 48 different ways and bill the individual departments. It's all, in our case, with this particular group, all general fund anyway. It didn't make sense to be spending that level of time every month on those uh, items and, and just parsing them out. And in some cases, I think they billed my department once last year 58 cents. It's definitely not worth the time that it took to come up with that number. So we did our best to estimate what we needed for phone and for postage. I mean, I guess glad to say that we overestimated what we needed. 
Uh, maybe we're down on things that we're mailing out. I don't know, but right now it looks like it's pretty safe uh, bet that we can reduce that budget. And let's see, the district court budget is up and I don't recall why specifically. Emergency management, the increase there is, as we just discussed, most of that's uh, from grants from the prior year that are coming in now. The auditors will make their journal entries and adjustments for us when the audit comes due. Uh, the general appropriations are uh, being reduced at 35000 and this is uh, and just a number of uh, areas that our, our costs are not coming in as projected, and that's um, actually kind of a good thing. We don't want to do that too often. Uh, but um, in this particular case, 35000 out of $2.5 million isn't too bad. Insurance and bonds down. We've already paid everything off, I believe, for the year. And there was a little bit extra there. The next uh, large one, well, the ORV grant, we talked about that with the uh, transmission that we needed to repair. And that's that's what that cost is. Prosecuting attorney, register of deeds, uh, and I think there's another one in here. The increases that you're seeing there are, are absolutely out of the control of the departments. These are primarily um, pension defined benefits that um, legacy cost, if you will, that's attributed to those departments that's driving that. And these are obviously we're paying for you know, the pension of employees who are no longer here uh, primarily. Uh, so this is just, again, that that legacy cost that we, we have to... Uh, uh, deal with each year. I have a question to ask me, if I may. <coughs> Why is that <laughs> the register of deeds or those that retire from the treasurer's office, whatever, charged to those offices? Uh, why, why aren't they just charged to us? Yeah. The, re the reason I ask that is this. Next, in, in, in the next, uh, go ahead. GSB, Government Accounting Standards Board. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I wondered why. Because, because, and I don't know if other offices, but I know in the register's office, um, the register is the only one left on the. There's legacy costs, unfunded accrued liability that has to be built to that department for prior employees that retired. Right. Mm -hmm. And because of our government accounting standards, we have to bill it to that department. Okay, I didn't know why. I just thought, why is it still charged to them? They're not even here anymore. Because there's still a cost for them, and we have to build the department they retired from. Really? Yes, ma'am. Well, that's only, interesting. No, okay. There's I, only one way that we can eliminate that. What's that? Don't retire. No. Yes. Hey, that yeah. Yeah. That's right. I just got it. They have to die. No, no, we had conversations. We had oh, conversation about good conversations of, of uh, good conversations about that, Tim. A way to to have a better control of right. that expense. We talked about uh, bonding this, yeah. and that, that process is still ongoing right now. It's actually in our bond um, advisor stands right now, working out the arithmetic on that. And I do expect you're going to see something here, if not in September, by early October. We're really running out of time, so it's going to have to be. It's supposed to be back with us next week. Very good. So what we're, we're, we'll have something to report on that here in, in the very near future. And the idea here is that, you know, it's not going to cost us less, but we'll be able to spread that expense out over a few additional years. And we will be very confident in the number we're going to have year to year to budget. Right now, we go through an actuary and they tell us each year, okay, it's got to go up this much and uh, we're, we're at their mercy. Um, we'll still have to pay for any shortages, but it, it will definitely put some relief on the, particularly the general fund, uh, knowing what we're going to have for sure each year. And if there is a small increase, we'll be able to absorb it. But we'll still have to pay the bond. Right. Yeah. Right, we'll have oh, a yeah, you're not, that you're number. Not. We'll know what number we have to pay every year question versus that. uncontrolled. Are we anticipating a, a pretty significant savings there? Well, the jury's still on. I was going to get into that when we talk about the 24 budget. We did get the actuary report in. Uh, was very surprised to see that our funding level actually increased. It was in the 70s last year, and most of our divisions were in the low 80s this year, which is exactly the opposite of what we were told to expect. So I'm, I want to figure that out. I want to see what happened there. And that's a good thing. But the bad thing was we know of at least one division, there's a significant error that we're going to have to have them uh, 
uh, fix at MERS. At least I think it's an error. It doesn't have enough employees in it. And we know we have more active employees than what they're showing in the division. Now, there might be a reason, a very good reason, a valid reason why they did it this way. You know, I always hold that out that maybe it is correct, but I need to have an explanation uh, because to have that, you know, it's a small division, but to have people missing out of a division in that report it definitely could have a significant impact one way or the other. Uh, so that we need to get fixed. Yeah. So. I think this bond move is a great move. Who, who brought that up? Is that a combination of you and Karen? Or Karen? Well, yeah, we started uh, earlier this year seeing those numbers going up and we're going to go, whoa, wait a minute, you know, this isn't okay. Um, but this, this is something that was opened up to municipalities several years ago, but unfortunately, if we're going to do it, we have to do it by the end of this year because the statute expires and we won't be able to do it next year. So that's why we're kind of pressing our people. Yeah. And we're still in a rising rate market. So it's going to be about timing to get yeah. bond in place before the rates go even higher. It's been talked about a couple of different times. Yeah. In the last couple of years. Well, if nothing else, we'll have the answer and we'll be able to determine whether it benefits us or not. I don't know how it couldn't, you know, with the added time, but, you know, that's remains to be seen. Uh, the school resource officer, the uh, Whittemore Prescott, uh, had to do primarily with the, I believe it was the health insurance rate. We didn't have him in the right program. So that was why you're seeing the increase there. Sheriff's overall expenditure budget falls by uh, a little over 40,000, primarily because we had in the budget uh, a new vehicle, but we bought that vehicle with ARPA money. So it, it doesn't need to be in the sheriff's budget too. And the last one, the treasurer number, the 47,905, there's an offsetting revenue for that. Uh, it's actually passed through monies that are received, I think it was the forest. Schools and roads. School, yeah, it's the schools and roads, and it's like forest service, so that game, it's a, kind of a strange combination, but it's uh, funds that they have to award to the counties, and then the counties send it where it belongs, either schools or road commission, I guess, in our case. And this was in efforts to reduce adjusting journal entries by the auditors. Mm -hmm. So we are booking it differently to save the working during the audit. So. so the rest of the resolution gives you a, a further break, breakdown of where the different adjustments are, increases and decreases in large groups. So we have four different categories listed, the personnel expenses, that's wages, benefits, anything to do with personnel. Uh, controllable expenses are things that department heads have direct control over. It may be sending somebody to a training, it may be purchasing office supplies, contracts, or whatever, but something that departments have control over. Then we have the non-controllable expenses, those are things like the utility bills, bank charges, things that we have no control over, but things that we have to pay. And then the last category is capital items. And if you want the line item breakdown, that's provided here too on something like I don't know, 50 odd pages. That vehicle you'd brought, uh, I think was brought up at the previous meeting and, and you're gonna provide us more information on that. A yeah. paper trailer, is it on there? I didn't see it. I think it was with one of the ARPA handouts that I gave you and it listed each one in the cost, but I can reprint that. Can you, you and, and highlight what vehicle you're talking about? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, and they're all tied to resolutions, which is kind of cool. So I can review that. I have a question. Go ahead. And it's about school resource officer. For some reason, I didn't have my computer with me tonight. What, what I see there, the expenditure is is this much, but my understanding is we only get $75,000. Right. So we're supplement that, supplementing that with, with our county money. So it's costing us money to provide that officer. Well, recall, though, that we have the officer 100% of the year, and the uh, school resource um, revenue comes in at, at nine months or whatever the school year is anymore. Yeah. But um, so you, we would expect to pick up some of that cost because now we're utilizing the officer when there's no school. And I understand that, but then he's not a school re officer at that point. I shouldn't be coming out of that fund. No, well, we have the, the employee attached directly to that activity. It's all general fund, but directly to that activity. Then what I would like to know is how many hours has that go to officers work for this county? How many hours do they put in? And a lot of, and I know some of this stuff is, well, 
if they work time and a half, we just give them, you know, instead of eight hours, they work eight hours overtime, then we give them 12 hours off. So that means we are paying for that, not yes. the school. I think that was a discussion that was talked at the last meeting where where the sheriff and, and uh, Tim met with the school and they came up with a, a different agreement. What is the agreement now? What is going to be the agreement well, for next year? There won't be additional hours, overtime hours attributed to the school without the school requesting it of the sheriff. And then the school would pay for those additional hours. So if they need somebody for a football game and it's an additional three hours, the school would pay for that. Okay, but if that's if that if that's an overtime, they're going to pay overtime. That would be over and overtime is anything that's, that's that's over forty hours, right? Right. That's over. Is that right? That's over and above the the contract. So we're saying we're providing this officer eight hours a day for the for the school week. If you need them for uh, instead of forty hours, you need them for forty three school. You're going to have to reimburse the county for the additional three. And then okay, it's that time and a half. But so I, I I would think after school um, for summer hours, that individual should not fall underneath a, a resource officer. They should fall underneath a different category. I agree with that. We could certainly do that. I mean, that's just arithmetic. So it's just a matter of figuring out is it, you know, three quarters and then we can budget for three quarters of the person in this activity and a quarter in another one. So I, mean, I just so. think that adds confusion to that line. They're not acting as a resource officer. They're acting as a patrol officer or, or whatever. Right. Sorry about the verbiage, but or, or a different type of officer, obviously. Train. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But because uh, it was 75,000, then that's all that should be there. It shouldn't be a hundred and some thousand. Correct. I agree. I agree. That's an easy arithmetic thing. If you want to do it that way, we can do it that way. Well, I like to see a black and white so it doesn't look like we're 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 supplementing the resource officer. Fact. I agree. Commissioner yeah. Scott, did you have anything? No. Questions? Anything else to add to this? Anybody? No, right now. No. No, let's take a look at that here. So that for a resolution, you need a resolution at the next meeting for the third quarter budget adjustments. What's the bottom line you are looking at, the bottom number? The bottom number right now on expenses, uh, they were total expenses was $11,681,729. Uh, revenue bottom line was 11723123 So it is a, a surplus if you will, not much, but a little bit. And understand that we um, you know, still have six weeks yet in the year, uh, a number of things. Uh, for instance, the uh, property tax revenue is still coming in. And there's a, there's a number of uh, state programs that we have out that aren't reimbursed yet. So we'll be monitoring those closely to make sure that we get um, the reimbursements that we're expecting, uh, the grant monies to come in. Um, so you'll see one of these for the fourth quarter. We'll do our best um, you know, with the information that we have in October. We don't technically close the books until the end of November, so there could still be some things trickling in even after the fourth quarter is complete. And those are the things that will cause the auditor to do some journal entries to make sure they're all accounted for. Um, but this is one of the things that they tasked us with with the last audit is to make sure we do these reviews like this, that we make the adjustments, that we have a pretty decent idea of where we are, at least in this moment in time. And we'll do it again after September. Okay, questions? Uh, item G, fiscal year 2024 budget draft. Okay, you have the hard copy in front of you. It's also on the iPad, so you have your voice why you want to go about this. I'm going to go through some notes. Uh, we have a usual issue in play. Uh, as you know, and we reported I don't know, a few weeks ago, we're talking to Gladwin County about the potential of an agreement to uh, reserve a block of beds over a correctional facility for their inmates. Uh, we had our initial meeting, and so far they have not made a decision yet However, if they do come up here, it does appear that they would be needing what we have in, in the balance. So we've been averaging, uh, as was reported in the last audit year, about 72 inmates per day. We, are, we have a capacity of 144. Uh, if uh, we are successful in our negotiation with Gladwin, there won't be any more capacity. We will be committing beds and we won't be able to accept any others uh, 
uh, from any other counties uh, unless there's a big downturn in uh, uh, housing needs that, that we produce. And if what, that comes through or that comes to pass, the budget that you see on the iPads and the one that's printed will balance. If it does not, and we've got to take this very seriously, if it doesn't come to pass, then we're going to have to make some other moves. And I provided a, a handout for you, the one that says uh, fiscal year 24 alternate budget plan. And again, this is assuming if that um, uh, agreement does not come to pass, we will need to reduce this budget by uh, a little over $931,000, pretty big number. Now, how does that come to pass? Well, there are a few assumptions that were made uh, years ago prior to anybody at this table uh, being here that did not come to pass, or at least certainly aren't relevant anymore. First one is our district court statute costs. Uh, in 2018, that revenue was at $692,776. For fiscal year 23, we've only budgeted 170,000. This was primarily, I understand from talking to people about the history, uh, primarily related to tickets that were written on I-75, traffic tickets that were produced. But that's a 75% drop or about a half a million in revenue that doesn't come um, from 2018. The second one, uh, second issue actually deals directly with uh, jail itself. In 2018, we brought in uh, a little over 482,000 in revenue from housing of inmates from out of the county. When COVID hit, that really dropped. It dropped down to about 232,000. And we've only recovered uh, this year uh, budgeting up to about 250, about a 48% drop or 232,000. So uh, over $750,000 in revenue that was sort of projected or set up for uh, about five years ago that has not come to fruition. And we are now, um, we need to face that. This is just not a sustainable, um, a sustainable pattern. So with that, I've uh, already worked through the numbers uh, to get to that reduction level, a few things that I've worked. Uh, the first one is that we would move the state grant road patrol, the secondary road patrol, from the general fund over to the road patrol millage fund. We do that, uh, we would send the revenue there as well. With this year, $64,754 in revenue is coming into the county, but the expense for that operation is $127,835, difference of just over $63,000 in the general fund. We would maintain that grant. Um, we would still match that, but we would just simply match it with uh, uh, road patrol millage dollars instead of general fund. And more on that in a second. Um, that's something we might want to do anyway. Um, second uh, uh, element, a second variable would be to shift one position from the sheriff's office over to the road patrol millage. The one position uh, is a $203,000 price tag that would take that out of the general fund. Probably the most unpopular suggestion on this sheet would be uh, the, the $149,000 uh, uh, item that would uh, have us adopt our PA 152 resolution. That's the resolution that the board says this is what our contribution will be to health insurance for the coming year. We currently do hard cap, and that works out very well because there are very few of our employees on the MESA plan that have to contribute. And those who do have to contribute, they have to contribute very little. We're talking uh, literally something in the neighborhood in one of those cases of about $80, or $80 a year uh, out of pocket. Otherwise, all of our plans are under the hard cap. Our core groups uh, stay with the Teamster plan. Their plan is above the hard cap, and they're having to pay substantially more. But if we do this, if we go instead of the hard cap to the 80-20, that's where the county says we will commit 80 percent of the premium cost employee, you will have to contribute through payroll deduction, the other 20 percent. That's what would produce the 149,000. And that impacts anybody who has health insurance with the county. It doesn't matter if you're on a family plan, if you're an individual or two person, if you have health insurance, you would be having to commit 20 percent. That would likely be um, uh, something that we would have to negotiate as well, or at least notify the unions that we need to go that route. We do have a process in place. We set up our health care coalition board. I would certainly go there and explain this is the situation and this is why we're having to consider this. Um, we wrote the language in the contracts, uh, and that's with all but the 
court contract again that left that final decision to the board, we still would have an obligation to notify the unions that we're going this route. And that's what that coalition is set up to do so that we make that uh, known to the unions. And then finally, to get to the balance that we need to hit, uh, we would have to do a reduction in force or layoff in this case of nine full-time equivalents. We would also have to lay off uh, our part-timers uh, because again, the way our contracts are written, our part-time employees uh, have to be laid off first before we hit any full-time employees. Mm -hmm. And being intentionally vague right now, I don't want anybody to feel they're walking around with a target on their back and we certainly aren't targeting anybody. And if we are able to successfully negotiate with Gladwin County, um, this is going to be demoralizing enough. If you could imagine being an employee and you're told that your job is on the line and then it turns out, well, it's really not. You know, we don't need to be whipsawing people back and forth just yet. So that gets us to a reduction in the uh, expenditure side of 958,000, which uh, exceeds a little bit that reduction goal at 931. Now, a few other things in play. Again, should the Gladwin County agreement come to pass, that would have a positive impact also on the commissary fund. So that's to say, if we have twice as many inmates in the jail, commissary purchases are clearly going to increase as well. So there would be an offshoot benefit there. The district court budget that you see here is really a placeholder. And I think I've mentioned this before, but they're going through an internal review uh, of how they operate. And there are definitely some changes that they're going to be making there. They are down one position right now. The judge also had an idea on how to offset some of the uh, lien costs that we're experiencing across all courts, uh, which is you know, a very healthy thing to be looking at. So that's in process right now. Uh, we might end up adopting a budget for district court that we're going to end up amending in, in uh, October or November as they uh, get through their review. Uh, so that's out there. Our health insurance rates will be released next week. I expect they're going to be at or below the hard cap again, but until we actually have those in hand, we won't know. So there could be an impact uh, still. Uh, was uh, contacted by Ross Common County and some of their employees, uh, some of their policies saw a 17% increase this year. I'm really uh, counting on that not happening because we're in such a large pool at the Mesa Group that we won't see anything uh, anywhere near that but I don't know the numbers until we actually see them. Already talked about the MERS. Uh, I think we budgeted enough here to cover what those expenses are, but that's pending any changes that have to be made to the actuary report. I was talking with uh, Mike Lefebvre uh, this afternoon, and they're still calculating some of the placement charges for the child care fund. Uh, we did amend his original proposal. Uh, he talked about the 75% reimbursement. It appears that's coming in fiscal year 24. So that was a very positive move that's already been factored in. Uh, but they are reevaluating their placement costs based on a couple of things that occurred here in the last couple of weeks and some long-term placements that they're going to have to deal with. This budget does continue our commitment to reduce our reliance on the tax revolving fund. This is the fourth year of a four-year weaning, if you will, of using that fund. This budget uh, still uh, shows 91500 coming from the tax revolving fund, but the intention was to draw down zero starting in 25. And this budget keeps us on target to do that. And finally, just to uh, make sure everybody is aware, the budget also says to the building inspections fund, uh, you need to be paying for your space at the annex, just like every other fund does, just like the MSU extension fund does, like 911 does as a separate authority. And they would be uh, you know, billed, if you will, at the same amount, the $12,000 annually. That, um, frankly, had very little impact on their bottom line over there. There's plenty of reserve, and they bring in enough on uh, uh, permit uh, fees every year that they will easily be able to absorb that. But that puts all of those funds on an equal footing in terms of how they... Uh, so that's how you increase the uh, the rent over there from 20 right, to 36. Right. Okay. So that's the thumbnail view. You've got the detail. You don't have all the detail yet for all the special funds, but I did want to show you the one handout that uh, gives you the uh, Road Patrol Millage Fund. Uh, current operation, uh, we would end up with the review that we've done, would end up with a fund balance next year at 68493 We have a paper copy of that. Yeah, you 
you've got it in the. You gave it to us. Yeah, you can you can have that one. Thank you. Um, now I want to come back again to that secondary road patrol where the general fund is uh, subsidizing, if you will, that sixty three thousand eighteen. Uh, this is a move that could be made regardless of which scenario we end up with. And this is and, and just, just for you to, to chew on. I certainly don't want to be making any decisions here tonight. Uh, but there, that would really put us uh, you know, right on the brink of you know, a, a zero balance uh, on the budget. So there would be literally no surplus. Um, you know, it's kind of a two-edged sword. You'd like to see a fund balance and a fund like that, but at the same time, you know, the general fund could certainly use the relief, and it is road patrol uh, after all. So what would happen then is the uh, revenue that we receive from the state would go into the road patrol millage fund, but all the expenses would go there as well. And that additional 63000 that we're subsidizing would then come out of the road patrol millage fund. Just an idea. Uh, it's um, but one that uh, would be doable, but again, it's kind of on the brink, you know, right on the edge there for the fund balance. Uh, so this really comes down to what our comfort level is. I guess in my understanding of this correctly, you want to take the fund balance from the road patrol of, and move it to the general fund? No. I would take the secondary yeah, road patrol um, department, if you will, that's in the general fund now. So we received uh, 64000 from the state each year. That's going to an officer that's in the general fund, mm -hmm. and it's its own activity 315. What I'm saying is take that activity 315, take it out of the general fund, move it over to the road patrol millage fund, even keep the 315 number in there so we can always see which uh, cost we're talking about. So just the opposite of what you said, take it out of the general fund, put it into the special revenue fund, the millage fund, and pay for it there. So you're talking about the grant money you get for that, that goes over there. Right. Balance that budget. And, and yeah, and then that dude was going to be paid out of the road patrol fund, not not our fund. Right. Out of the 259. Yeah. Okay. But that's not actually the road the road patrol your fund you're talking about is not is the millage road patrol fund. It's, it's, no. Yes. 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 Oh, I know. You mean moving it over into that one? Correct. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Part, is the millage for the road patrol? Yes. The small grant is for secondary road patrol. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's for the county roads. Yeah. All we're doing is taking it and moving that's it underneath the millage. Right. Just combining it with the millage. You know, just kind of mill that one over. Um, if you're not comfortable with it, and it certainly is an imperative. And that we just do it, but it's it's an option that's out there. You know, this 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 nine hundred fifty eight thousand dollars is a, to me looks like a pretty big number. That's also with like with our five hundred thousand dollars of ARPA funds. Yes. So, uh, you know that that's not going to be there as of twenty five. Twenty five. So, neither, pardon me. And neither will the um, revolving fund. Right. Neither one of those will be well, we're it, talking it, about almost six hundred thousand bucks. And what happens with the road patrol millage? That's coming due too. I mean, so <clears throat> that move that we're talking about making going to affect in in two years if if hopefully it doesn't have, if that road patrol millage doesn't pass, which God forbid, then we're really going to be in trouble. Yeah, we would be back to the road patrol millage gave us a five year gave us a five-year breathing mm -hmm. because five years of four well not five years three, ago three years ago four well come come next election they'll be five it's three years old right now so if, if we did not get that three years ago we would have had to make cuts in the last three years you know we would just had to um the sheriff's office is a general fund expenditure. Mm -hmm. It does not have dedicated funds to it. The road patrol made it dedicated funds. So it's imperative to keep doing that and get, get, get the public to support that. And, and that's what gives us breathing room to, 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 to staff at the levels we are. 
Um, you know, like too many other departments are, well, too many departments are small and strapped down. You know, I mean, our, our you take, for example, anything down, anything down this hallway, they work at 35 hours and they're, they're at minimum staffing. Um, you know, Brenda, when, when I came on board, had all full time off full time people in these offices. Now we got reduced manpower, kind of reduced people, and then part time people were fully staffed, where it was all full time people. So it's it's very difficult to cut there. Um. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, this Gladwin thing, I, I mean, I wish it, I, I hope it goes through. We're in, we're in competition with another county for it. Mm -hmm. um, that, that 958 could be Gladwin County money coming here. But it might not come at all. Well, it might not. That's why you have but, the alternate. Right, but, right. but again, we also have 500. I, I, I don't like this number, this $958,000. We, we have the $500,000 that we added to this. The $600,000 from ticket revenue has been gone now for a couple years. Um, COVID is now, we're two years post-COVID. This number, as far as the jail numbers, I mean, I think during COVID, we realized a lot of things. Not as many people are going into the jail, and I don't foresee any of that changing. Um, I mean, these are, are going to be our real numbers moving forward. Uh, and, and we're two years out. This isn't one year post COVID. Um, I, that, that number is very, very frightening to me. Well, th that number going into the courts from ticket writing is a, a, like a shadow number. That was an actual revenue number going in. It doesn't reflect how much we got to keep after we distributed it out to the different. That's been gone now for, for right. two years. That's, right. that's nothing really that should be right. relevant that's here. Not, that's not going to generate. To this a, year. That's not going to generate a savings for us. That that was a, that was a heavy cost. We're associated with that. I have a question to ask. On this snowmobile, uh, that is a grant, right? For how much money? Twenty five thousand. Was it twenty five thousand? That Dow grant. All that right. was twenty five thousand. Yeah, it sounds right. You're talking about the grant for the purchase of the trailer or snowmobile, or you got yeah, you got two different grants. Well, well, the last well, one well, that you got was twenty five thousand. Yeah. Now, how much is the one from the state? Five thousand. Five thousand. Five thousand. Yeah. To fund our snowmobile trailer. Right. Well, the, I guess what I'm looking at is the. Revenue is thirty thousand. Expenditure is five thousand. Yeah, but the expenditure will be more than that. Is that it, correct? It, it will be when we figure out what we're purchasing. So, but again, that twenty five is dedicated to trailer, snowmobile, you know, just actually equipment. So once we've got that, you know, prices round up for that, we'll be able to amend the budget to show the expense. The whole thirty thousand is none of it is taxpayer money. Ogamaw taxpayer money. Right. And this correction, corrections over here with, with revenue, you, you you put in the um, money you think you're going to get from um, from Gladwin County. Is that right. correct? The, the budget that you see in the large. And that's a million copy, dollars, right? Uh, is an estimate of what we would anticipate coming in out of Ogamaw or out of. Uh, Glad one, that's right. Well, I just kind of, I I guess I don't understand. I, I know it doesn't include the commissary fund, but if they come from Glad one, it's going to be more expenditures in food and all, all that stuff. A lot. But um, but this doesn't include the commissary fund, but in order to make a million dollars, not including the commissary fund, we'd have to have at $31 a day, we'd have to have 89 of the prisoners a day to yeah, make a million dollars. This is, wait a minute. This is not figured on a per day basis. <clears throat> this is figured that we charge them X amount of dollars to house 
whatever prisoners they send us. So you're not going to do it on a charge. prisoner base, you're just going to charge them a million dollers. Yep. Who's, who's on the negotiating team for that? Or who's doing the negotiating with Gladwin right now? Well, on law enforcement, law enforcement committee and I. The concept going in is that we would reserve, and, and Gladwin would need to have this assurance that we would reserve a certain number of beds for their inmates. So they're how many in? Well, we don't know yet. See, we're still negotiating. We may not get them all. We may only get a portion. So we, we haven't gotten uh, to that level of uh, discussions yet. Uh, but we would then, our contract price would be based on that block that we would be reserving. I'm going to tell you right now, the $33 that we discussed here when we did the fee resolution is, is not covering the cost. So it's likely going to be more than the 33 per person. Uh, we have to factor in everything, in this case, including transport probably, and just all the other logistics that go with that. But we shouldn't have to but, transport them. They should have to transport well, their own. I mean, that's, that's all on the table. Uh, we haven't been in the $33 range per inmate per day since 2018. And that year we were 34, 24. And these are numbers that our auditors provided. Last year, our cost per inmate per day was $71.45, right? Substantially more than that 33 number. So we may want to consider uh, amending our fee schedule and not citing the 33. Uh, but recall though too, that, that we were only at half capacity. If we we're at full capacity, we're already staffed up for the 144. Uh, so that number would be dramatically lower if we had twice as many inmates with the same staff. Now, there's still going to be costs, uh, the things that we can't control, like the, the food costs. So you're still going to have those increases. That's a substantial portion we've already staffed up for. Uh, so there's that. But um, just pointing out the $33 is, is not really shouldn't be on the table in terms of the headcount. So this negotiation then is a block of beds that you we guarantee for a million dollars is what you're saying. Right. Or, or whatever price that gets negotiated. Well, in our budget. There's but in the budget, it says a million dollars. Right. Okay. So you you have balanced this budget on a maybe. Well, we balance all budgets on maybes. That's why I gave you the alternative. We, we balance every budget every year on maybes. Are we going to generate this much in taxes? Are, is every department going to generate the same amount of revenue every year? I understand, but on taxes and stuff, we know we're going to... Well, he's giving you an alternative. If not, I mean, he, if you want, he can pull that big number off of there and put that number in it. You may have to do it anyway. But to me, but to me, yeah, but to me, that's not much different than saying we're probably going to have six hundred thousand dollars worth of ticket revenue. <laughs> Go ahead. But, but I mean, what this is is, I mean, right now at this point in time, this is a possibility of an absolute great opportunity for the county. We have no other opportunities. So Tim's making it very clear that this is a, a projection. He, he's made an alternate. We have this opportunity in front of us, and yes, right now we don't know if it's going to be a yes or a no. I don't think it's going but, to be a yes. Well, we, Go ahead. we, we should try to stay optimistic. I am optimistic. You have that right. But anyways, this is the only opportunity that we have in front of us right now that we could somehow try to save this, and that we need to do everything in our power, absolutely everything in our power, to try to make that happen, because there's no other options right now. So all we can do, this is smart for us to have this, so we can see this, so we can realize the importance of this moment of if we can make this happen. Because we have the alternate here without it. It's this moment we have right now, if we can capture this, it would be absolutely huge for this county. But to me, that's also a false number. I, I, I think yeah, it's great. It's a false I, number. I'm it's not, a production. I, production. I, it's, I'm not finished. About. With what I'm I was going to say, hang on, hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm not finished. But to me, I, I think that that's great to put in the possible projection, but then also with that number should be included, if we do get these inmates, what it's going to cost us. That would be a more accurate number. What it's going to bring in as far as expenditure and what it's, or as far as revenues and what it's going to cost us to have those inmates. I mean, if we want to be true to look at this, I, I think that's the only true way to do that. Oh. Um, We've got it in front of us. When are we going to have an answer by? We're at their mercy. Um, you know, we're going to continue to push them, but politely uh, say we need to adopt our budget. We we need to know. 
and it will probably come down to assuming that uh, everything is smooth and they want to do this, then we're going to have to have a contract drawn up with the attorneys of both counties. So, I mean, we could be into October before we actually have everything in motion. Now, we could buy ourselves a month. I think I'm pretty confident of that. But if we get into late October and we don't have this, we're going to have to implement uh, another alternative. You're talking about plan B. Something? Yeah, I do. Well, is there a deadline for PA 152 and the decision for 8020 versus hard cap? The, the deadline for that? The deadline is January 1 because it's based on the calendar year. So calendar we would, um, uh, I'll sit down with, um, uh, I plan on pulling the health coalition together anyway as soon as I have the rates uh, from Mesa. So once that happens, we'll talk to them and that will be within the next few weeks here. Okay. Does do health insurance premiums change on the calendar year or on the fiscal? Calendar year. Okay, so, so all line up and you will be able to right. meet that that's, deadline if you have to. And that's factored in here. We're a quarter into the fiscal year before that would kick in. So that's factored in the number that you see on here. Okay. Sheriff, are you ha currently having conversations with Gladwin? I guess, can you give us an update? I, I knew it was I being discussed. I called the sheriff today. And, uh, you know, they're, they're negotiating among themselves, so I haven't heard nothing, but he said that he'd get a hold of me as soon as he got a decision down there. What are they currently doing, I guess? Uh, well, they got a, they got a, apparently their their jail isn't up to standards right now, and uh, they're either going to have to close that jail or protect for DLC standards. So they're kind of, kind of up in the air right now to see what it would take to get that up and running to the standards of POC. So they're looking at that and uh, I'm hoping we have a, a decision before too long. But I, I have that working conversation with the sheriff. I know the sheriff on there pretty good. So they'll, they'll get a hold of them if we find something out. Mr. Simmons, did you have something? I just think they're going to go in a different direction besides Oklahoma County. Well, that's 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 fair. Well, ho hopefully I not. Mean, hopefully not. I think that. Then have you had an opportunity to meet with each department head? And I mean, have you your? Yeah, the departments that are directly impacted, um, mostly one. Yes, so we've had the, the conversations. Um, we did have our department head meeting. Gosh, was that a week ago? I don't remember when it was, but. Uh, I did let the departments know at that time that we were looking at, you know, potentially a fairly grim outlook uh, and did challenge them to come up with any other adjustments. And they came through. Uh, a couple of them came through with about 300,000 that's incorporated into this already that went in the right direction. Uh, so they've picked it up. But like uh, Commissioner uh, Scott said before, most of our departments are already at bare minimum. So they're not coming in and saying, well, this person is extra I don't really need. And no department is saying that. And frankly, that's the bulk of our expense, you know, is the personnel. Mr. Mingo? I mean, I, I, without that $500,000, that, that number would be significantly different. Mr. Scott? Well, my observation is I'm, I'm kind of surprised because we had this conversation about daily rates in the jail and everything else, and it was a four to one vote. Uh, uh, just a, or a three to two vote or the, I can't remember how it went, but you, it was a majority to, to go ahead and contract with another county uh, at a daily rate. And there was, when I asked the question about expenses, everybody told me it wasn't that much more. And now it seems that it seems to be a highlight of the conversation now is, is the added expenses. I'm just kind of Pleasantly surprised, I guess. Um, you know, budgets are budgets are set on a lot of different factors. Um, we we knew where we were just a few years ago, and we did put a, a stop to. Well, we got what heard analogy the other day about digging a hole, and the first thing you got to do is stop digging. And put the shovel down and i think we did that here in the last three years we've kind of put a stop to that because in my tenure here we were going digging a hole at about three hundred thousand a year and when it, we've been able to stop and still be able to control a lot of things 
Um, but you know, just like anything, it's it's uh, it's like so many governments. I mean, when we talk to Gladwin, when we talk to the administrator down there, they're having the same issues as we are. And I'm, I, you know, I, like I said before, I mean, when we talked about the daily rate, how can you how can you hold how can you hold so many beds out there and only get paid for the ones they use, but guarantee? That you're going to hold this many. If I call a hotel up and I need, I need six rooms, they're going to charge me for six rooms. They don't care if I got six people to sleep in them or not. They don't care. I pay for six rooms. Um, if I only had two people, I certainly wouldn't order six rooms. Commissioner but if you didn't know, if you thought that six people were coming to town. Because six people told you they were coming down, then you'd get six rooms, right? Well, I'm not going to ask you right or wrong because what well, because okay. you don't want to agree anyway. But uh, uh, the thing is, is uh, from what I've heard, and the the, the sheriff just said it, they got problems with their building down there. DOC's been there. They said that they can't continue to operate the way they are. So this could be at least a fix would take, a fix isn't two weeks long. They're not gonna fix this in two weeks. If we can save them, their budget, their budget's over $2 million to run their jail right now. Where do you think ours is? I know where it's at. Thank you. Okay, yes. thank you. So if I can use half of their budget and take care of their inmates, half their budgets, this number right here, okay? Then I can save them the other half and they could take that money and start repairing their jail if they wanted to. But their whole county budget is, is that far behind too. They need that other half. Okay. So, you know, I think it's a, I think it's a good move and I, yeah, I, I'm not happy that there's another there's another county out there, but that could could help them. But I think this is a I think this is a good chance. Commissioner Wilty, I'm I'm good right now. Uh, uh, where are we as far as uh, obviously when do you want this budget? I, I, I'm going to disagree uh, again with these. This is my third term, and, and you add five hundred thousand dollars to that nine fifty eight. That deficit would be one million four hundred fifty eight dollars in in one point four million. Yeah, um, I, I I I don't think we're we're headed in the right direction. Um, hopefully again, I I I hope that this does go through. Um, otherwise, we're gonna have to make some really difficult decisions. Um, with these alternatives that he has in front of us, um, you know, healthcare is something I don't I don't like touching. Um. Employees. That's a benefit to our our employees. That's that's a big selling point. Um, there's going to be some really difficult decisions. So I'm going to disagree with with you. I I I don't think we've been headed in the right direction. Which so, direction you want to go? Again, you add on five hundred thousand dollars that 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 was given from the MARPA funds that that we made a, a vote to give to. That would put us at one point four million dollars right now that we'd be looking to find. So what versus nine hundred and fifty-eight thousand um, dollars. Okay. I think there's going to be some really, really uh, difficult decisions in the upcoming years. Like twenty twenty-five, when we don't have that money anymore. We don't have five hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So where do you want to go? I, I don't have all of those answers right now. Um, hopefully, again, uh, Gladwin, I mean, we we are able to make an agreement with them. Um, but I. I my only statement out of all of that was that I, I don't agree that we're headed in the right direction. Again, hopefully we get these inmates and we don't have to make these alternative uh, alternatives that are in front of us. So I guess what a deadline are you looking for? The, the uh, This is a draft, this is the beginning conversations of this. What's the next step here? Well, you've got another round of meetings. Um, where there's you know opportunity obviously for more conversation and if you feel you need more we can do that uh, we need to adopt a budget by september 30th so that's the uh, 
calendar that we're on anyway. Um, and there are other options if it looks like this is going to happen and we want to wait another month before we solidify things. There, there can be a continuation budget. I'd really rather not go there. We don't have to, uh, but it's a possibility. So you may be month to month while we finish wrapping up uh, something with Gladwin uh, or not. I mean, you may say we can't wait. We've got to make the move and, and we do it. I don't recall a number being at 1.4. Uh, in my this is my and maybe I'm wrong, but this is my third term. I don't remember that being uh, I guess even nine hundred fifty nine thousand. I, I don't remember in the, in the last few years that I've been sitting here. I don't remember that number being that this high. Is the worst budget we've ever seen. Okay, that's what the worst I was looking for in my twenty five years here. It is the worst budget I have seen. Yeah, when I was a county commissioner before, I was never not even close to. This. I remember we were fighting over three, four hundred thousand. Yeah, <laughs> screaming. Old days. How did this happen? Long gone. This thing's long gone. Okay, so what's our next step? I guess do we have just a? Uh, what do you guys want to do? Do you guys have? Do we do we want a budget meeting? Do we obviously? I I'm definitely not not in any any. Uh, agreement to this by looking at these numbers. Um, what do we want to do to make sure that we meet this budget and we're not saying you have to pass this and we're at the deadline and what we hear year after year after year. So I, I guess, how would you guys like to move forward? I'm asking commissioners. Other than some small critiquing on this draft budget, I don't see why we can't go with go with this budget to, to get to our deadline get to the deadline, but I'm not willing to pass a budget on a maybe. Well, a million dollars is a, a million dollars is a lot of money. Then don't pass it. Well, ho hold on. I, I'm asking, obviously, uh, I, I don't think it's fair to pass this budget with this little brief conversation. I I, I think there needs to be a, a deeper dive into this. Um, and again, we, we have an individual in place now to where we shouldn't feel like we're down to the deadline and pass this, which we've heard year after year after year. Well, we're not down to the deadline. How do we we're, not we'll get be, to that we'll deadline? By accepting something that we have that we're, we're not no, because okay. you wanna you wanna say no, so then that takes us closer to the deadline. But we all have a right to our opinion, and that's why we're sitting. Oh, here. absolutely. I'm also not comfortable with this and in well then pull out this. pull out the one figure and Fold this into it, and then you got a balanced budget. Hold on, what figure? Well, the Gladwin County agreement. Um, uh, Brenda doesn't think it'll pass. Take it out. Take it out of this budget. I really don't think it's going to. I don't. There I really you go. Don't. So her answer is take it out of the budget. So then you got to just you just got to make these cuts, then to to add that money back in. I think that these cuts were just giving to us as options. Um, they weren't final decisions. These are really big decisions to make that I I, I feel deserve definitely some more conversation. Um, I mean, before we were moved road patrol money, I'd like to have a conversation with the sheriff and, and see how he feels about that and see who's, who's impacted then by this. Um, I, I, I would like, we had in the past, uh, meetings, a specific meeting just to discuss the budget. Um, I, I guess yeah, I would like that also. I, I would like that I, also. I think that that's what we need to do. Um, versus it being 7.30 at night and everybody wanting to get out of here um, on this type of budget and these type of big decisions. I would like to personally uh, have a budget meeting. Are you going to come to the budget meeting with highlighted custom in the spending? or highlighted revenue additions? Again, my point is with this type of budget, I think it deserves a one-on-one -on -one meeting and talking about these types of, of cuts that are gonna impact everybody. Um, it deserves a one-on-one -on -one, uh, meeting or one further conversation one with, with all of us. That's okay. direct conversation and possibly department heads that wanna come in um, and open to any, any and all employees. Commissioner Scott, these are very big decisions we may have to make. Oh, absolutely. We need to have. Absolutely. Been here before. I've been here before. Not, no, we have not. We just heard we have not been here before. Every year. But 
as was mentioned before, if we're going to be a team, we need to work together as a team to try to resolve this issue. And and that was brought up by um, Mr. Wilson before. I think I think the department had to be in in part of that. You know, uh, they may have a suggestion that we haven't even thought of. I agree. It impacts them. So what day, guys? I can do evenings and Fridays. That's that's my schedule. I can do evenings and Fridays too, but I can't do I can't do tomorrow. I think we need to look into September, the first or second week, because uh, it works. First week. Okay. Labor Day. The fourth? Oh. I can do the eighth. Let me look. Anytime. The eighth? Yeah, the first week in September is really all my uh, township meetings. They all hit. I got NEMSCA on the eighth. Where at? When? The moon. And it's uh, well, it's third next week at three tops. Why not Friday the first? I don't think one meeting is going to do it for you. Um, the first, I actually, first isn't a holiday, is it? It's a holiday weekend. It's a holiday weekend. Yeah, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's good. I don't. What's what's next week? We have next week. Twenty eighth. Let's do the the sixth. I have or the fifth. I have Logan Township. That's my township meetings. I mean, I can miss them. It's fine. I can let them know. The 29th next week or the next two days. August 29th? I don't, I don't. That's fine. I have. No, I don't have no, anything on the 29th. I have nothing. It's Tuesday. It's fine with me. What time? You might as well get started on it because I, I don't think the way you're talking, you're going to get it done one night anyway. But, what well, time on the 29th? 5.30. That's fine for me. 5.30. Can we make sure all department heads are aware? and We'll post it and everything. Yeah. That's already. Well, our, our, are we going to go down our expenditures one by one, take a look at what we can trim? By department, probably. And can we make sure that they're aware that what they're looking at for alternatives? That yeah. Everybody needs to know. I don't like the alternatives, especially. <laughs> we don't like them at all. Twenty ninth, five thirty. All right, twenty ninth, five thirty. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. You bet. Yes, man. Eh? Oh, I got us. Okay, so we'll go on to H, Constitutional Week Proclamation. We've got a request from the Daughters of the American Revolution to make a proclamation for Constitution Week. We did this, I think, two years ago. We didn't do it last year. Um, it's you know, obviously ceremonial. There's no, you know, official act that uh, you, you need to do other than passing the proclamation. Pass it. Have a resolution and pass it. I agree. I agree. Okay. Uh, item I, Overdose Awareness Day and Recovery Month. It's a resolution that was proposed by Michigan Association of Counties and came from our opioid consultant there, um, Amy uh, Delinke. And uh, just again, another one of those, um, it's not an honorary resolution, but I forget the exact terminology for it. There's uh, outside of recognizing the overdose awareness day, there's no obligation you're committing to or anything like that. So we'll put that on for a resolution. These, there were some stats on there that were pretty stunning. <laughs> 2021, I guess, can that be? So that should say 2022, correct? Michigan lost more than 3,000 individuals to overdose. What do we have in this budget meeting? Next Tuesday, the 29th. I don't know where I am. Okay, got it. I was in September. I thought that's a little late. That, that date, that, did they want 2021 or did they want 2022? I think they're just quoting a statistic probably from 21, but I'll, I'll double check that. And you see there's some blanks there for us to fill in too. I did for Oklahoma County. Okay. We'll just make sure that's correct for next week. You bet. Okay. Uh, public comment. Is there any public comment in the room? Sir. If I remember, 
Come on out. You gotta turn it off. You gotta what? You gotta turn it off. <laughs> Dan Ozalski, Foster Township. Just have a question for you on the, you guys were complaining about not getting enough bids from some of these outside sources. So what is the liability requirement, for example, the snow plow for the county? Can't quote it off the top of my head, but there that you have to show us proof of insurance. Some base. I mean, it's a number like three million, five million. I think it's only a million, but I, I'd have to double check it. Okay, because if it's that low, then you shouldn't have a problem. But I was thinking, if you're getting into the three million, five million, there's a lot of people that's not going to bid it because it's going to be very costly. And I know that because I used to do it. Yeah. Well, it should be in the bid. I thought it showed on there. It showed on there one million. Was yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I thought I read one million. Okay. Only so next year, put in for a bid, sir. No. Please. No. The problem being is that no. we don't get a lot of bids on, on some things because everybody's so busy. I That's mean, true, they can hardly even breathe. Some of them are so busy. I was in an office the other day listening to stuff, and it's like, oh, my gosh, how they keep all this straight. I mean, the phones are ringing, and people are talking, and it's like, holy cow. There's a huge lack of contractors across the whole United States. It's everywhere. But they're so they're so busy. It's like ones that are busy. And they're and they're all going to the four winds doing this doing something. This is doing something else. That's doing something else. It's like is there any public comment on the phone? God. I have a comment. Hello, Tom. How are you? Good. How are you? You know what I thought about? I I, I apologize. I did think about you when we were talking about moving to the annex building. I guess you, we definitely should have had your input. I apologize for that. That's okay. And I'm not totally against moving to the annex. They work out either way. Um, there's a TV set up over there just as easy. Okay, go ahead, sir. Um, my comment revolves around um, the 530 meeting next week that obviously is going to affect the employees, but you're asking every department head to be there at 530 at night when they're probably going to be there during the day anyways. So, no, not every department had anybody who would like input or or would like to give us insight on the budget. It's, it's pretty much whomever would, would like to come. You don't think that the employees or department heads are going to want to be a part of that? Uh, they This probably will not be the only meeting, but it, at this point in time, this is this is the date and time that we're at. Okay. I, I, would, hope they, I would hope they would want to be, but if, if it doesn't coincide with their schedule, they definitely can uh, hook up with Tim. Okay. Hopefully, uh, the next meeting, hopefully we can all uh, possibly come up with an earlier meeting, maybe on a Friday. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Tom. Any other public comment? Are you guys doing the annex voting then? Mary was... Oh, uh, you were going to go ahead with did you, what was on the schedule? It was free. Uh, Mary was listening, actually, and texted me, and she put a hold in. Do you guys want to do it for the annex voting on the calendar already? Is the commissioners, are you guys familiar with it over there? Like it isn't going to be the similar, um, uh, similar setup. It, 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 it is. I'm just wondering, um, sound wise, I guess we're going to have to try it out to make sure that you guys are, that individuals are able to hear. Um, you can't hear in there. They don't have a lot of fans blowing. I, I struggle in there. I'm not going to lie. At the annex? Yeah. In there when, during the commissioner or during the planning meetings. I struggle a little bit. I do. Ryan sits right there and talks to us. I struggle from time to time. Because that gentleman's talking to me. <laughs> I'm asking questions, yes. So I guess we'll have to try. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But but it's not similar to this. It'll be just, it'll, it's more similar to like our structure right now versus up there during our regular meetings. That's fine. Do you guys want to meet over there starting next Tuesday? Why don't we try it and see how, see how we like it? Oh, I mean for the budget meeting? Yes. Next Tuesday. Okay. Better get that down there or I end up the wrong place. Wonder where everybody is. Next Tuesday, annex building, 5 30. Annex building. Does that work? Okay. A motion to adjourn at motion. 7 38. We're, we're adjourned.